My Lords, the uh, noble Lord the Minister is right to emphasise the importance of uh, bus services. I would say particularly for the elderly, I speak as uh, somebody who has uh, reached pension aid uh, myself. Um, and in that light, and, and given the government's, uh, shall we say, cavalier attitude uh, to pensioners that we've see, seen on display, can he give an unshakable commitment that the government is going to maintain the national bus pass and also the statutory freedom pass scheme in London? Or, or is there the possibility that they too could find themselves subject to means testing? I share the noble Lord's uh, enthusiasm for the freedom pass scheme at my age. Um, he uh, he's attempting to put me in the invidious position of a of a of a concrete commitment for all time. The Freedom Pass and the uh, local authority uh, and the national scheme for free travel for pensioners has lasted a very long time, and I think we would all hope that it continues into the future. For the first time in over a decade, British pensioners find themselves in a precarious position facing potential cuts to critical benefits that they've long relied on. What once seemed untouchable, the winter fuel allowance and free bus passes, has now become the center of political debate in the Labour government. This recent political storm began when Transport Minister Lord Hendy faced mounting pressure from Tory peer Lord Moylan during a parliamentary session. Moylan pushed Hendy to offer an unshakable commitment regarding the future of free bus passes for pensioners. These passes have been crucial for the elderly, particularly for those living on fixed or limited incomes, as they enable access to affordable transport and a degree of independence. For many older people, the ability to travel freely is not just a convenience, but a necessity, helping them attend medical appointments, buy groceries, and remain socially active, thereby reducing isolation. The free bus pass system is widely regarded as a lifeline for pensioners who are often financially constrained. But, despite the seriousness of the issue, and the clear demand for a firm stance, Lord Hendy's response failed to provide the concrete reassurance that many were hoping for. Instead of a clear and unwavering commitment to maintaining this benefit, his reply was vague, leaving much room for speculation and concern. He merely stated, somewhat ambiguously, that we would all hope that it continues into the future leaving pensioners and advocates uncertain about the long-term security of the free bus pass scheme. This uncertainty has since fueled fears that the government might be considering changes or cuts to the program in the face of economic pressures. This lack of clarity sparked immediate backlash. The opposition, led by Shadow Transport Secretary Helen Watley, was quick to accuse Labour of abandoning the elderly, who are already suffering from the loss of their winter fuel payments. Watley didn't mince words. Not content with cutting pensioners' winter fuel payments, Labour have now thrown doubt on the status of their bus passes too. For many pensioners, these two vital benefits of free bus travel and winter fuel payments have been much more than just forms of financial assistance. They symbolize the government's commitment to protecting and supporting the most vulnerable members of society. The ability to access free bus travel not only provides older people with a means of staying mobile, independent, and connected to their communities, but it also helps reduce social isolation, which can be a significant issue for the elderly. Similarly, winter fuel payments offer crucial support in helping pensioners heat their homes during the colder months, particularly as energy costs have surged in recent years. For individuals living on fixed incomes, which is often the case for pensioners, the removal or reduction of these benefits would create a considerable financial strain. With inflation continuing to push up the cost of essential goods and services, and energy prices showing no signs of decreasing, these pensioners are left with fewer options and resources to cope with the rising costs of living. Without these supports in place, what was already a difficult situation becomes even more challenging. Many pensioners find themselves forced to make hard choices whether to heat their homes adequately or afford the basic necessities. These benefits are not simply a luxury. They are a lifeline, ensuring that pensioners can maintain a basic standard of living in an economic environment that is becoming increasingly unforgiving. Lord Hendy's comments did little to calm nerves. His vague remarks about the government's tight financial situation only added fuel to the fire. A spokesman from the Department for Transport scrambled to clarify the minister's statement, 
insisting that he misspoke and that there are no plans to scrap the free bus passes. But the damage was done. This controversy comes in the wake of the government's decision to reduce winter fuel payments, limiting them to only the poorest pensioners. The policy shift has drawn criticism from various quarters, as many argue that pensioners on fixed incomes, regardless of their exact financial status, are particularly vulnerable to the rising costs of living. The Labour government, however, has stood by the move, insisting that tough financial choices are necessary to stabilize and rebuild the economy. In defense of the policy, Chancellor Rachel Reeves spoke at a recent parliamentary Labour Party meeting, emphasizing the government's focus on long-term economic health and the need for spending reforms. She also pointed out that despite the changes to winter fuel payments, the overall support system for pensioners has not been weakened. Reeves highlighted the £900 increase in the state pension this year as evidence that pensioners are still receiving significant financial aid from the government. By pointing to this rise, she suggested that the government remains committed to helping older citizens manage the cost of living, even as it reevaluates how benefits are distributed. Yet for many, the issue is about more than just numbers. It's about trust. The government has insisted that these measures are part of a broader effort to address the country's financial challenges, they argue, created by the previous conservative government. But for pensioners, who have seen their benefits cut and now face uncertainty about the future, these explanations ring hollow. The wider public reaction to the recent policy changes has been marked by significant unease. Concerns have been raised not only by the general populace, but also by unions and organizations that advocate for the rights and well-being of the elderly. These groups have been increasingly vocal, accusing the government of being disconnected from the financial pressures that older citizens face, especially during a period of rising inflation and living costs. The criticism is not limited to outside voices, as internal tensions within the Labour Party have also begun to surface. Some Labour MPs are expressing growing worry that the government's approach could alienate a crucial segment of their voter base, pensioners, at a critical time. These MPs fear that the perception of being unsympathetic to the financial needs of the elderly could cost them support among an important demographic that has traditionally been a reliable source of votes. Meanwhile, Although Number 10 has publicly insisted that the cabinet is fully united in backing these controversial cuts and economic decisions, there are persistent rumors of discord behind the scenes. Some suggest that not all ministers are entirely comfortable with the current strategy and the possible political fallout it could trigger. The tension within the party suggests that internal debate over the government's direction may still be ongoing, even as they present a united front. The situation is fluid, with a commons vote looming that could see Labour MPs break ranks to oppose the winter fuel payment cuts. Whether or not the bus pass issue escalated further will likely depend on how firmly Labour addresses the public outcry in the coming weeks. For now, pensioners across the UK remain anxious, unsure of what the future holds. Many are asking, if long-standing benefits like free bus passes and winter fuel payments can be put on the chopping block, what might come next? This is a question Labour will need to answer, and soon, if they hope to maintain public confidence in their ability to protect the most vulnerable. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you found this video interesting.